church say amen. amen. It's good to be before you. I had been out of services for a couple of Sundays and uh, the word had gotten out that I was a little under the weather so I thank those who called and uplifted me in prayer and uh, the Lord has restored me. And as I was um, watching the monitor, they were playing, um, or singing rather, Joy to the World. And, and I, I never thought I would come up with a, anything humorous I could share about um, partly why I had been out, but I, I had a uh, surgical procedure performed and I was, I was conscious. Um, but during that procedure, uh, and now I look back on it uh, and, and I chuckle because uh, I, I was humming joy to the world. And, and, and the, 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 the doctor said, which was even more interesting, he didn't know what it was I was humming. <laughs> you know, everybody don't know about God's music, amen? <laughs> he said, uh, Mr. Sims, he said, what was that song you were humming? I said, joy to the world. Church song? <laughs> I, I said. I said, yeah. I said, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm Minister Sims. And he said, so was what I do was doing to you that bad that you had to hum a church song? <laughs> 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 and I said, no. I just was hoping it would hurry up and be over. But um, it, it's funny how the Lord puts things in your mind to help you to get through situations. And, and and while it wasn't it wasn't you know like a major ordeal, but it was major for me at the time. <laughs> and so uh, yeah, joy to the world. And that could just as easily be our message for today: joy to the world, for the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart <laughs> prepare him room. And heaven and, and nature sing. I might be able to preach if I stand here long enough. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Now I'm watching the clock. <laughs> and, 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 and since my, my resident professor is not here, uh, I, have a, I have an associate professor Professor Malinga is watching me, so if, if, unless he put the thumb down, I'm all right. <laughs> oh, Lord, 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 it's so good. This is, my, this is my favorite time of the year, Advent. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite time of the year. And, 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 and I have to confess, it is not strictly because of the scriptural connotation, but it is lots of, of the writings of other authors and how they told the story uh, through human eyes. And, and so I just, I, I just enjoy all of it. And so all of these passages of scripture that you've heard today um, just, um, just, just say a lot to me. Um, first of all, just looking back at the Old Testament, um, it has been proclaimed that a child is going to be born of a virgin. And then we come to the, the, the gospel lesson, and, 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 and uh, Matthew is talking about uh, how all this does happen. Uh, but what I like about it is that wise men were seeking him. And my message today is that wise men still seek him. They still seek him. And the, the ones that aren't seeking him aren't as wise as they think they are. Amen? Amen. Now, I was in class with, 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 with Professor Weaver this week, and, uh, and, and he was just uplifting a point that when, when you read scripture, you have to remember, uh, like, the translations and, like, how things were written for a particular point in time 
and how they address certain people and they didn't address everybody in the same way. And so therefore, there's such a great emphasis on the men. But that is not to suggest that in today's world, we are excluding women because indeed, wise women and men still seek him. Amen? Wise women still seek him. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. The scripture tells us uh, in, in the gospel, first of all, about these three kings, these three magi, these three travelers, uh, and, and it, it, it really doesn't matter um, what, what you call them. And, and I was thinking, uh, Sister uh, Pat Caldwell, when we were young teenagers, we used to sing at old St. Mark, we three kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we travel so far, Theel and Fountain, Moore and Mountain, following what? The yonder star. All that, all that, all that, that means a lot to me. And I don't forget it. I didn't take it lightly then, and I don't take it lightly now. But it says they traveled from the east. And you know, this is another topic for another day, but I'm going to just interject this. I have friends who tell me that these people, these kings, these wise men, that they were actually Master Mason, builders on King Solomon's Temple, but don't go there right now. We, 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 we'll do that another time. When, 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 when Pastor Weaver let me come back again, we might talk about that. But by evidence of this long journey, uh, we, we, we don't know uh, whether they used maps, but we know that they clearly what they watch the skies. And so many of us, you know, we come out the door in the morning and we go in at night, we don't look up, we don't look down. We don't look at nothing that God has done for us. God has set the table. He has, he has painted a portrait. If we would just but look at it, we would know how blessed we are. But see, that's the point of the wise men in this, this, this portion of the story. Because they look at their surroundings and observe things, which sometimes we don't. They saw a star that they had not seen before. Sitting up in the east. And so it came to their presence of mind that there was something special about this star and that if they followed the star, they would find a child king. And the interesting thing, again, about that is that no one knew any more than that. The wise men just traveled based on faith. Mary and Joseph, the parents, earthly parents, traveled based on faith. They didn't really know what type of son they really had there. Joseph probably secretly was hoping he'd be a nice, good old carpenter. You know, have a steady income, but no, he was going to shake up the whole wide world. And so the gospel uh, refers to these wise men or women not so much relative to their background um, or their training or their study or their education, but that there is a wiseness about their ability to understand. And see, you know, and scripture tells us, you know, in all that we get, get understanding. And, 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 and what's happening is they, they, they see the star, but they don't know everything, but they, but they try to understand, not because they're that smart necessarily, but they try to understand why is this star here? And what is this star, star pointing to? Now the angel is giving them a little hint. They still don't know. They don't know Jesus. They haven't met. I, I, I'm sorry. I got. I got to interject one more thing. I'm sorry. I don't make you all laugh. I don't like laughing when I'm in the middle of something serious. But this has to do with not knowing who Jesus really is. And there are a lot of people who did not know who Jesus was. Right? They did not know. The wise men did not know. Mary and Joe didn't know. The shepherds did not know. But I was watching a commercial on TV the other day. This is about Christmas, but I love. <laughs> and the two M and M candies. The two M&M &M candies that were in the house, and I, I may not be quoting this exactly right, 
But the one said to the other one, is that Santa Claus? And he says, I don't know. I never met the guy. <laughs> now, what made that so funny is you got two M&Ms just talking. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry I had to throw that in there because I, I, I love that commercial. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> Whew. But the other thing about this wisdom that the wise men had and that God expects us to develop in our growth is to know that things don't just happen. The sun doesn't just shine. It doesn't just get cloudy. It didn't rain in Pennsylvania yesterday and sunny in Florida that same day. It doesn't happen that way. This God, somebody did things that make the world go round. Someone put what stars in the sky. And these men were wise enough to know that it has a greater meaning than what we come to accept just on our daily walk of life. And yes, wise men say they are still seeking him. And I preface that this way by saying they say they are still seeking him because, you know, we got TV programs, we got all kind of manner since, since the pandemic, we got all kinds of programs that come on, and we have people that are preaching and are talking about um, Jesus' birth, but everybody that preaches about him don't believe it. Everybody that say, thank you, Lord, don't believe God gave it to them. But they say it because it sounds good to say. Oh, the Lord is blessing me. But you ain't thinking about God. You right, Brother John, what he gave me. That's, that's all, that's all I, I, I got it. That's all I know. I got it. I don't care who came from. But, but, but you see, this child, and, 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 and this is the point where right here where I think I, I, it's time for me. I'm looking at the clock, and, and I'm going to just move away from my script. Let me just say this. When Herod the king, wealthy man, got a kingdom of his own, that man don't need to be concerned about no child named Emmanuel. But he is so insecure like many of our political figures of today who are so insecure until we can't stand to see anybody doing better than we are or if we think they're doing better than we are. And sadly and occasionally, it can happen in our churches. It can happen. We, 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 we are so insecure in our trust in God. See, because that's, that's really, that's really the, 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 the essence of this. If you trust God, it don't matter what nobody said about you. It don't matter how they look at you if you trust God. But King Herod is a king on a throne. He's got money. But when he hears about a baby that they're calling a child king, he gets a little bit concerned. Maybe, just maybe, he gets some kind of power that I might want to have that might make me lesser than what I think that I am. And so he conspires. The Bible's full of conspiracy. He conspires with the wise men. Say, brothers, when you go find this young child, I want to go praise him. 
come back and tell me where you have found him, and I will go and praise him also. But the Bible tells us that Herod spoke with a forked tongue. He was envious. He was jealous. And so he was so afraid that this child just might have something. He had no idea just how much something he really had. But he thought he had it all figured out. Told the wise men, so when you get when you get there, come on back and tell me. I'm gonna go pray. And so the wise men, though, because they when they when they finally got there, you know, they they they, they listened to a higher authority. <laughs> see, 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 though that's what makes them wise. When you listen to the word of God and not the word of man. See, they listened to Herod. And Herod may have promised them this or promised them that. If they had done what Herod had said, they would have sold Jesus down this river. But they didn't. They trusted in the word of God. They said, we're going to go another way. We ain't telling Herod nothing. And so they go. But Herod, all the while, is still worried about this thing. There's a child somewhere out there. I don't know how old he is exactly, but this is what I want done. You go out and you kill every child within so many square miles. Kill them all. And then I'm sure to get this child king. Oh, but God. God had a plan. God had a plan. God had a plan. And you know, I'm going to share this because this is the other part about Christmas and me uh, and Advent. And as I've gotten a little bit older, these words bring tears to my eyes. I get filled up with the power of God's word, it touches me. It makes me feel, I, 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 I can't explain it, but can't nobody do me like Jesus. I, that's all I can tell you. I, I, I cry sometimes. I don't know why I'm crying exactly, but I feel filled up because God is so good. He has been so merciful to us. Even when we weren't worthy of his blessing, God has been so good. I feel better. So much better since I laid my burdens down. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. But anyway, Herod wanted get control. But it didn't work out. Because God had spoken to the angels, to the shepherds. It says the cattle and the sheep were lowing in the pasture. Even they knew something was going on. And the essence, I think, of this closing of this message is this. It don't matter how smart you are. It don't matter how much you actually read, though God wants us to read his word. But if you trust in him, if you have faith in him, even that of a mustard seed, then you've got to be looking for that man. You're looking for him. You come to church on Sunday, what? Well, I'm still seeking him because wise men and women still are looking for him. Scripture says seek him while he still may yet be found. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. Can't nobody do us like the Lord. And so we come here today seeking the king. Seeking that child. No matter how far, what the song says, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far, we're going to go as far as we can go, as far as we have to go, because wise men and women, church, I just want you to hear this, this is it. Wise men and women are still seeking him. <laughs> to God be the glory for the great things that he has done. And I'm just so thankful that God speaks to my heart and speaks to my mind and 
and, 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 and this helps me to see what needs to be seen. Ain't always right, ain't always popular, but we got to do what God says. We got to do what the Son of Man says. So as we continue to go through this Advent season, just remember we are still seeking him. We are still seeking him. There's no telling what he, what, 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 what gifts he has for us, what, what, what revelations he's going to share with us because he is such a great king. And it simply says, at the mentioning of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord God Almighty all by himself. Amen, 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 and amen. And before we go into our affirmation of the week, I do want to acknowledge, uh, I have one guest card um, from Walton and Lejeune Small. Amen, amen. And Pastor Weaver uh, has your phone number, uh, your email address, and he will be reaching out to you, I'm sure. I'm, I'm going to say he's going to still do it this week, even though he's got the, the, you know, um, the time of, of grieving that he's going through. I, I still think he's going to take a moment just to reach out to you. So we want to welcome you to St. Mark today. Thank you so much for being with us. And now let us recite our affirmation of the week. I stand on the truth that the love of Christ is mightier than the hate in this world. I stand on the truth that the peace of God is more enduring than the chaos of this world. I stand on the truth that the patience of Christ is stronger than the pressures of this world. I stand upon Christ. May Christ live more fully in me this day. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. I wrote that in big print, too. Rehearsal for the Christmas drama will be immediately after service, actually since I think 12 o'clock, uh, and Sister Ranisha Blackstone uh, is leading that, and she might still be taking auditions, I don't know. So uh, if, if you got a, if you got a, you know, a, a hankering to, to be in, uh, in one of those productions, then uh, please stick around after church. And these will be each Sunday up until the date of the production, amen? Thank you, Sister Jean, I did, I really did, I, I flat out forgot it. And now, let us prepare for our benediction. God who is able to do great things. God who separates darkness from light. Goodness from evil. Sickness from health. And even life from death. May he continue to rest, rule, and abide with us all. Henceforth, now and forevermore. And the people of God did say amen. Amen and amen.